Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, turn to discuss further into parametric equations and now go over example 11 of the example series. And in this example, we'll look at a family of curves. So let's move forward. So uh, speaking of families of curves, let's look at this example. It states, investigate the family of curves with parametric equations x equals a plus cosine t and y equals a tan t plus sine t. And now we are asked, uh, what do these curves have in common? And how does the shape change as a increase? Yes, yeah, so now if we wanted to graph the solution, we could just use that Desmos calculator that I've been doing uh, many times in my earlier videos just to see it. And then we'll change a and see what happens. And here are uh, graphs for specific values of a, but I'll get to that in a bit. So if we click here, yeah, so what I've done here in this calculator, which is pretty cool, I've uh, added that parametric equation form. Again, you could the way you put it is you put it in a bracket like this so that this a plus cosine t represents the x uh, coordinate, and then the a tan t plus sine t is the y coordinate. And I have it here from 0 to, two, zero to 10. And what I'll do is I'll just make, if I click this, it doesn't show anything else. Just to show you here, and you could change these values of A and see what happens here. So as you just change A, notice what's happening. I have a circle at zero, which is absolutely amazing here. So this is pretty cool. You can also press this, and it will change. Uh, and you can click to change the uh, step size or the, uh, the range, as well as the speed. You can make it faster, slower here, or faster like that. And as you can see, it, move, it moves and changes quite amazingly right there. So I highly, highly recommend playing around with this. It is one of the coolest uh, calculators on, online. So again, move it around. And then here, what I've also done is uh, done the exact same equation here. But I've uh, written uh, this as a plus cosine b, a plus 10 b. So I've just changed the b and the, the t with b so that I can change t on its own. So here, if I show it now, it, this is graphing one specific point or one spe specific value of t. So notice how that changes like that, which is absolutely amazing. So another thing I want to show before I get to the uh, graphs that I have already pasted onto that notes. If you change this here, notice what changes. So if you change this t range, but if you notice that cosine and sine, uh, they uh, basically are periodic every 2 pi. So you could just write 2 pi to get the exact one here. But if you go any larger than this, for example, if you go, let's say, one, let's say 10 and then go 100, notice how this gets darker because it goes back on it again. And also you can even change it to, let's say, 10 and then go over to, let's say, 100. You're gonna still get the exact same thing, but this is darker because this is going around the graph, tracing around it multiple times. But I believe just 2 pi would be uh, the range you just need. And you could also go from 2 pi to 4 pi, right here, 4 pi. But if you, for example, erase this, go 3 pi, let's see what happens here. Yeah, so this is only half the, half the stuff that's graphed. Let's go to 4 pi, which is quite amazing. So now we have this. And what you could also do, which is uh, quite amazing, is let's play this with this changing as well. So notice how that's going about it. And then when it gets back, let's just speed this up so it gets all the way here and then slow it down. And notice here we have it goes around while it changes. So you have a little circle there and then it becomes a big circle and then it changes across like that. This is just absolutely amazing. And you can hide this graph or you could show this and you can do that, you can speed it up as well. This is just this is one of the coolest calculators of all of all time I've ever seen. So anyway, yeah. So anyways, from that I've copied and pasted several uh, graphs or several graphs where different very values of a. So below are the graphs for the cases where a equals negative two, negative one, negative 0 0.50, 0 0.51, and two. So when we have a equals to negative two, we have a graph that looks like this. And in fact, this negative two is an asymptote line where these two branches or these two curves on the left and right of it actually approach this asymptote line which is at x equals to a where it's in this case negative two so that's quite amazing and again this is the the 
uh, axis are y and x like that. Now for a equals to negative 2, we have a similar thing. And, but notice here it's a, it's, it's a smooth curve on both sides. But here when a equals negative 1, we have a cusp right here or a sharp corner there, a sharp point like that. And in fact, there's again, there's an asymptote line across here. In this case, and this one is from, this is 1 actually. Is that x equals 2 a, which equals to negative 1. And here is a sharp a uh, sharp point. Now when a equals to negative 0.5, notice what happens. There's a loop that happens across like this, which is quite interesting there. And in fact, here again, we're going to have the exact same thing. So there's going to be a loop right here, but there's going to be still, there's an asymptote line here at a equals to 0.5, or if this is 1, this is right here is 0.5. Because you can see that every uh, square is 0.5 separated. And again, this is the x, this is the y, and now we have x equals 2a, which equals to negative 0.5, like that. And now when a equals 0, we have just a perfect circle, which is quite fascinating. And now when a equals to 0.5, we have it the flipped on the other side now. This is basically the exact same thing as the other uh, graph where a equals to negative 0.5, but now everything's on the right. So x equals to a, which is 0.5, which is another asymptote line where both sides approach it. And then when a equals to 1, we're going to have the exact same thing, a sharp point. And again, the asymptote line here at x equals to a, which equals to 1. And the last point here, everything is smooth across here. And what we have is at the 2 value. So x equals to a, which equals to 2. So every single point, except when x equals to, I mean when a equals to 0, we have asymptote line at a equals to, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean at x equals a. So what we'll uh, write down here, so notice that all of these curves, except at the case of a equals 0, have two branches. And both branches approach the vertical asymptote x equals a as x approaches a from the left or right. But when x, uh, I mean when a is less than 1, both branches are smooth. And also when you have it on the other side, when uh, a is greater than 1, you have it smooth like this. But when a reaches negative 1, the right branch uh, acquires a sharp point, and this is called a cusp. For a between negative 1 and 0, that's when we have the loop. The cusp turns into a loop, which becomes larger as a approaches 0. But when a equals to 0, both branches come together and form a circle. And you can also see my earlier video here. So yeah, here's my earlier video. If I'll just click here to see the notes, the written notes. Yeah, so here are the notes from my example 2 video. And notice what happens uh, in here when a is equal to 0. We just, we're just left with x equals to cosine t. And then the a tan t disappears as well because a is 0. So we have y equals sine t. And what we actually end up having is a circle like this. And I've already shown it, which is quite fascinating. So make sure to check that video out as well. Again, just to refresh on these equations. So this a goes to 0. This a tan t goes to 0. We're just left with x equals cosine t and y equals sine t, which is the parametric equations for a circle. So let's move forward. Yeah, and now what we end up having happening on the right side is exactly the same as the left, but just a mirror image. So for a between 0 and 1, the left branch has a loop which shrinks to become a cusp. So this one's on the left side now. When a equals 0, it becomes, uh, it, yeah, it shrinks to become a cusp. And then for a is greater than 1, the branches become smooth again. And as a increases further, they become less curved. And also notice that the curves with positive a are reflections about the y-axis for the corresponding curves with negative a. And uh, yes, yeah, so just a mirror reflection about the y-axis. So left and right sides are basically mirror images. And these curves are called conchoids of Nicomedes. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, basically, these, these were named after the ancient Greek scholar Nicomedes. Just a brief history lesson. And here I'll just type that out, brief history lesson. And uh, so that's what they're called, or known as conchoids of Nicomedes. Uh, he called them conchoids because, or conchoids, so I'm not sure how to pronounce it, because the shape of their outer branches resembles that of a conch shell or mussel shell. And you can go to Wikipedia to see 
a conch. A conch shell looks like this. Conch is just a common name that is applied to a number of different medium to large sized sea snails or their shells. The term generally applies to large snails whose shell has a high spire and a notice, noticeable siphonal kennel. I'm not sure what these means. In other words, a shell comes to a noticeable point at both ends. So it looks, yeah, it looks something like this. So this is somewhat like our shape where this is going like this and this is, has, a, has a cusp like that. I believe that's why it's called that. Let's just have a second look here. This is on the other side. So yeah, we do, an, uh, we do actually have a shape that kind of looks like that, where there's a cusp there. And there's a, this shape there. So there's a cusp there. It looks kind of like our shape, which is quite interesting. Yeah, now just to get a reference for uh, the mussel shells, again, again from Wikipedia, mussel is just a common name used for members of several families of clams or bivalve muscles, I think that's how you pronounce it, from saltwater and freshwater habitats. And here is some images of them. Uh, and it kind of looks like that cusp where we have around there, where it's kind of gradually, um, you know, basically it's, it's, it's extending like that. So we have a curve like that, then we have a curve like this. It kind of looks somewhat like our uh, conchoids curve or the, the shapes that we were just drawing about on this side or on uh, up there. And uh, now just another brief history on uh, Nicomedes for, from Wikipedia as a mathematician. So he was uh, roughly uh, uh, living around uh, 280 to 210 BC. He was an ancient Greek mathematician. Almost nothing is known about Nicomedes' life apart from references in his works, like many geometers. I think this is people just dealing with geometry and other stuff like that. Uh, Nicomedes was engaged in trying to solve the problems of doubling the cube and trisecting the angle. These are interesting stuff. Uh, hopefully I'll get into those in later videos. Both problems we now understand to be impossible using the tools of classical geometry. In the course of his investigations, Nicomedes created the Conchoid of Nicomedes, a discovery that is contained in his famous work entitled On Conchoid or Conchoid Lines. Nicomedes discovered three distinct types of conchoids now unknown. That's interesting. Uh, anyways, that's yeah, so that's all for today. Actually, let's just check this uh, one more time on this. Uh, uh, this graph here. I just want to show you again, just make sure, like I can't reiterate enough, just play around with this. This is absolutely amazing kind of curve. So yeah, just check out that link in this calculator I've I've made over here. And yeah, just check that out. Let's see how this looks like again, just before it gets to the zero mark. So notice here, it, it, the cusp becomes a circle that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and as, then it finally connects into a circle when this is equal to zero. Let's go to the zero. Let's go to the zero, zero like that, and there's the circle and just goes around. This is very amazing stuff. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn, like always, again, you can download these exact notes. All the links are there. You can check out that calculator and other stuff like that. So, yeah, anyways, download the notes if you like them. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.